Hey what's up guys, this time I'm going to teach you about the switch statement, which is very similar to what we learned last episode, the if statement. So what you want to do first before you use a switch statement is usually is usually have a variable or an enumeration, so something like that, any number really, um, just as a variable. So we can do something like this, int number is equal to 500. So now that we have that, we can now make our switch statement by doing switch. And now we inside of here, we need to, instead of putting a condition like we do with the if statement, we're simply going to put the variable that we're going to be testing for. Okay, and I'll explain what that means in a second. So you're going to go ahead and open this up like you would do a, um, what's called a if statement by using uh, curly brackets here. And so now we're going to be testing for cases basically, okay? And each case is going to be a condition. So let's make a case here. So all you got to do is type case, space, and then what number is you want to test for. So the way this works is we have this variable here, right? And we put that into the switch statement. And now we're just providing different conditions to see which case equals, you know, the value of number basically. So let me just go ahead and show you. Uh, it's better for examples, really. So uh, it's better if I use an example, I mean. But anyway, so we'll put 500 here, colon, and then enter, okay? And so this means basically that if number is equal to 500, then execute what is under this semicolon, okay? So now we can put some stuff here, like see out um, the number, I don't know, well, it doesn't really matter if it's uppercase, the number is 500, okay? In line, just like that. And then we put break here, I'll explain that in a second. So we made our switch statement here, and then we're providing the variable that we want to test for with our cases. And then it's going to go through each case. We only have one case currently, but it's going to go through each case. And whatever case will match the variable that we entered, that's what's going to be what's executed. Okay, so so as you can see here, our number is 500. So if we were to run this right now, it would say it would run this case here because, of course, the number is 500. But if we were to change this to something like uh, 400, none of these would run. There's only one case, so nothing would run really because none of these match the cases. There's no case for 400. There's only a case for 500. So let's run this and I'll show you. So there we go, we get nothing, right? Because none of the cases were matched right there. So we can go ahead and change this back to 500 and we'll see if it works now. And there we go, so it says the number is 500 because the case matched, of course, with the variable that we provided with the switch statement. So if we want to, we can add even more cases for different values. So we'll do case, and now we can just make up a number here. We could do zero, see out the number is zero just like that and we can add as many cases as we want to okay it can get as long as it wants pretty much um, and then also oh, I forgot to tell you about the break statement so you have to have break at the end of whatever code you're gonna be executing so we can have multiple lines of code within our cases so we can just you know oops not <laughs> wrong thing so we can copy and paste this as many lines as we want to to have as many lines of code as we want it does not matter but always remember that you need to put a break statement at the end of um, the code okay so the break statement is the equivalent of just having this at the end of if statement right if you remember the if statement that was the that's what tells the if statement when to stop you know the code that's the end of the block of code so the break statement in this case is going to be the end of the block of code so that's when it stops that's um, executing all this code so if you don't have a break statement it's just going to continue it's going to mess up your code so just make sure you have one so yeah so if you run this it should say um, all of that so as you can see here yeah it says it a bunch of times um, so that's how it works, just don't forget your break statement. Um, and then we have different cases, so we have case 0 now, let's add some more cases before we test even more. Case 125, um, see out the number is 125, break. So the concept is pretty simple, we can have as many cases as we want with different values for the variable that we put into the switch statement. So let's go ahead and run this again. And it still matches to 500. If we change this to 125, it's going to run the case for 125. Oops, wrong one. Okay, run that. And there we go. So we get uh, 125, right? Really simple, but there's one more thing we can do with a switch statement. It's called the default case. And so we just put default right there instead of case. And then inside of here, we're going to put some code. So we'll say. Um, I don't know that number, okay? And so the point of the default case is basically, it's just the else statement for the switch statement, basically. If you remember last episode, the else statement was the um, code that was executed whenever none of the if statement conditions were matched. So this is basically the equivalent of the else statement. And don't forget your break statement, never forget that. 
Um, so this will be executed if none of these cases are um, taken, basically. And so let's try that out. So we'll do, we'll put a random number here. Let's try that. And it should say, I don't know that number because none of the cases are that number right there. Yeah, so it says, I don't know that number. So that's basically really simple how you do a default for a switch statement, right? If you have no other condition. So yeah, it's like your else statement, pretty simple. Um, very similar to the if statement, but it's kind of different because you're only, you're, you're testing cases with, you know, specific values. There's not really a condition where you can put like, um, you know, operators and stuff like that exactly. So it's, it's a little different, but it's very similar to the if statement. So let me go ahead and show you something really cool. Like we can make a little menu with the switch statement. So let's just code something real quick. We're going to make a little menu here. It's going to be pretty cool. Inline, see out. Well, this will be a food menu, okay? And we're going to allow people to choose a bunch of options from the menu if they want to, to eat food. So we're going to say uh, one is taco. So we're going to have four options, by the way. So one is taco, uh, see out, two, we'll do some ice cream for number two, like that, see out, three, we'll do Doritos for three, not really a food, more of a snack, and then see out, um, four, that's going to be steak, okay, pretty generic. And so those are, oh wait, let's finish our menu right here with these things. Okay, so this is going to be our little menu here. Let's run this real quick to see how it looks. And so we get a cool little menu, pretty cool. And so now let's make it so that the user can choose which item they want off the menu, which food do they want to eat, right? And so let's do that with a switch statement. So we need to ask the user which one they want, right? So we're going to make a uh, integer here to store their choice. All they're going to do is provide the number of whichever food they want, right? One, two, three, or four. So in option, let's see how... I can't type. Okay, so we're gonna say enter the number for the food you want. Pretty cool, simple. Let's just leave it like that. And then we'll do CN option. So we're gonna ask for that input. Um, and so let's try that out first before we add the switch statement. So we get the food menu and then let's put number four if we want some steak and then nothing happens because that's it. So now let's add our switch statement. So switch. And then inside of here, we're going to put option, just like that. Open this up. Now let's add some cases. So case one is going to be just one, just like this. So case one for taco. So if they put the number one, this will be run, of course. So we're just going to say, um, let's see, see out tacos incoming, just like that. See out uh, gives tacos, okay? Let's see here. And let me just go ahead and add, well, we need, we need a break statement first. And let me just go ahead and add the other cases real quick. Okay, so I added the other three cases. So we have one, two, and three for tacos, ice cream, and Doritos, and steak, okay? So those are our four options. So if they choose any of these options, then you know it'll say all these things. But let's say they choose something else that's not on the menu, right? So let's have a default just in case that ever happens because you know maybe they choose the wrong thing, right? They put like five or something like that even though there is no five. So we can have a default here. We could say, see out, you didn't choose any of the food on the menu. Try again, something like that, right? So this is a good example of um, how you might use the default, by the way, if you just do that. Oh, don't forget your break statement, of course. There we go, so break. And let's try running this to see if it works. So food menu, into the number for the food you want. I want some ice cream right now, so number two. And it says ice cream incoming, gives ice cream. Pretty simple. Yep, that's just an example of how to use switch statement, okay? So I'm gonna give you one more example um, of a switch statement before we go. This is for enumerations. We can use enumerations with switch statements, pretty cool. Um, I've seen this a few times in programming, actually. But um, let's go ahead and make an enumeration here. So this is gonna be our months enumeration. So let's add some enumerations, our enumerators with all the months. So January, February, uh, March, April, May, uh, June, July, August, September, November, oh we need a comma right there. November, I can't type November. <laughs> oh my gosh, November, um, wait, I forgot October. Oops, I'm not good with my months. So October, 
comma, November, comma, December. So these are all 12 of the months, I believe. So let's count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there we go. And so now what we want to do is to ask the user for their favorite month. So let's try doing that. So see out what's your favorite month. All of this is very simple, but it's good to, it's the repetition is really good so we can get some practice and I can show you good examples of how to use these things. Cause there's no really, there's no really no point in learning all this if you're not going to know what it's for. So it's good to have some examples. So anyway, see out, put the number for the month. And if you have any suggestions for this series, by the way, if you, if I'm doing something wrong or, you know, if you want me to explain better or something. Or just like if you have any suggestions of how I can make this better, just let me know and I'll be glad to help you or try and be better. So what's your favorite month? And then it says put the number for the month. So, so what they're going to do basically is put the number into the input. We're going to ask them for input. We're going to put ask them to put the number for the month that they like. OK, so three for March, because, of course, uh, March is the third month. But something we can't forget is that um, enumerations are zero based, just like arrays. So this would be zero, this would be one, and this would be two. So March is not two, so that wouldn't work. So let's just go ahead and change this to one. So instead of being zero based, now it's going to start at one, one, two, three. So now it's going to be um, perfect. It's going to correspond with the correct number for the month. So one through 12 now, instead of one, uh, zero through 11, right? Um, so now that we have that, let's ask for the input. So int month, um, cn month just like that okay so now that we have that let's add a switch statement so we can test and see which one they provided so we're gonna put month just like that and we already we have a default here so we'll just say we don't even need a default you don't have to have a default by the way I don't know if I told you that so we'll just leave that like it is so see out or case so so we can go ahead and do case one but if we want to make this more readable to a programmer like me, we can simply put January. We can put the enumeration because C++ is really smart. It knows that January is equal to one. So we can just simply put the name of the enumerator and it knows that it's number one, right? So case January, and we could put, I like, oops, I like January two, like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna, wait, I need a break statement here. So what I'm just gonna do here to save time is just copy and paste these 11 more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I'm just going to change all these to the corresponding months for you. And there we go. So we got all the months set up here. And so whenever they provide the number, it should correspond with the case. So for example, if they provide the number five, it should go to case May. And May is equal to five, of course. So now it's going to run this piece of code here. So let's test that out to see if it works. It should work. I think we did this correctly. So I don't know that number food menu so let's enter the number for the food I want let's put a random number and then it defaults so it says you do not choose any of the food on the menu try again right so it says what is your favorite month put the number for the month example three for March so we can put um, my favorite month is my birthday month so June so we can go ahead and put six for June and now it says I like June too so it worked correctly it was able to look at our number and then check and see which month that corresponds to with the case right so it's pretty simple switch statements are really cool um, I don't see them that often whenever using programming, but they are used, of course. So, yeah, if you have any questions about switch statements, I'll be glad to help you. Just ask a question in the comment section below, or you can ask in our Discord. There's a link to our Discord in the description below, so make sure you join it. Um, so, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for switch statements. All of the code from today's episode is going to be in the description below, so make sure you click that link and then bookmark the link for future use. In, in case you forget how to use switch statements, you can go back to the link for um, a good reference, right? So if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.